Joe Biden is a good man. I think he loves this country. I think I he's agree. a patriot. I think he's not a felon. The history books will remember him well if he passes the baton. If he stays in, and he will lose to Donald Trump. He's losing in every battleground poll. Give it two weeks till people process this debate. He will be plummeting. You know, he risks turning this country over to Donald Trump. These people who are like sitting on the fence or something, or, or we're all in for Trump. I'm fascinated by that. You know, it's almost like, you know, you know when you're a woman and you're dating, so you have a really nice guy who takes your hold your pocketbook while you're shopping, yeah. you know, or, or like really treats you well, and you ha you're bored with him. And you got this the other on the one motorcycle. who's a convicted felon on a motorcycle. Yeah. You're hot for him. Yeah. He's the guy, yeah. you know? That's where they're And who at. grabs you by the hoo-ha without your consent. Exactly. <laughs> well, have you seen? Listen, have you seen? There were photographs of Trump supporters, and one of them said, you can grab me by the mm, -mm any time, Donald. Listen, I would, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm this perfectly is okay with Donald Trump grabbing her by the hoo-ha. I'm not okay by, with Donald Trump grabbing the United States of America. Thank by you. Our yes. Look, you know, I think what we saw was that Biden lost that debate. I think that is an accurate depiction of what happened. Blame it on a cold, uh, blame it on his stuttering, blame it on over-preparation, whatever. But yeah. he did lose. Um, he, maybe he needs to go. Maybe he needs to be honest with himself um, and, and the American people. He can bow out at this time with grace and dignity. He has a record he can be proud of. But what I will say this, I think it's really ir ironic that we're the only party talking about needing to replace our nominee. I think it's right. really ironic That's that right. the party that should be pressuring their candidate to step aside is the Republican Party. Their nominee... Their nominee is a convicted felon. He's facing hundreds of charges for criminal activity and has been proven to be a racist, a business fraud, libel for sexual abuse, an insurrectionist. And as Biden said, he has the morals of an alley cat. Republicans need to be holding him accountable. The majority of the party, which has been cowardly and feckless and complicit and enabling in allowing Trump's racism, uh, 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 bullying, his demography, misogyny. misogyny. Why are we, as Democrats, those of us that are Democrats, calling for our nominee to change? Anna, because he's losing well, well, but I'll, I'll... He said some Democratic states allow people to execute babies after birth, an egregious lie that is illegal in every state. He said everybody, even Democrats, wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Roe was supported by two-thirds of Americans, even more Democrats. He said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned, abortion returned to the states. Legal scholars have told me directly this is not true. He said the U.S. currently has the biggest budget deficit ever. No, that happened under Trump in 2020. He said the U.S. currently has a record trade deficit with China. That also happened under Trump in 2018. He said Biden personally gets a lot of money from China. Zero evidence of this. He said there were no terror attacks during his presidency. In fact, there were multiple attacks. He said Iran didn't fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terror groups under his presidency. Iran, in fact, did. He said Biden wants to quadruple people's taxes. That is pure fiction. He said the U.S. has provided way more aid to Ukraine than Europe had. It's actually the opposite. He said the U.S. Provi pr has provided about $200 billion in Ukraine aid. It's closer to $110 billion. Uh, he said 18 or 19 million people have crossed the border under Biden. That is millions too high. He said many of these migrants are from prisons or mental institutions. His own campaign cannot corroborate this. Mm -hmm. He said Biden has only created jobs for illegal immigrants. Total nonsense. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 National Guard troops on January 6th. There's no evidence she even got such an offer. It was the president, not Pelosi, who had the power to deploy the D.C. Guard. He said Pelosi now acknowledges she turned down the troops. No, her office tell me, tells me this claim is still a lie. He said he deployed the National Guard to Minneapolis in 2020. Actually, that was the Democratic governor. He spoke of, quote, ridiculous fraud in the 2020 election. Zero evidence of any widespread fraud. He said NATO was going out of business before he took office. Completely, clearly absurd. He said the U.S. was paying 100 percent of NATO before he came along. The U.S. made up about 71 percent of NATO defense spending, not 100. He said he, not Biden, is the one who lowered insulin prices in Medicare. He did it for some seniors, but Biden did it for far more. He said Biden indicted him. Again, no evidence Biden has had a personal role in any of these four prosecutions. He said Europe takes no U.S cars, just not true. He spoke of food prices quadrupling under Biden. That's a wild exaggeration, though they are up. He said Biden made up the idea he called dead service members suckers and losers. No, the Atlantic magazine reported that, and then former Trump chief of staff John Kelly...
corroborated it. He said Biden called black people, quote, super predators for 10 years. Biden never once deployed that phrase, let alone for 10 years, though he did at least once speak of, quote, predators without specifying as about black people. He said his Trump tax cut was the largest in U.S. history. Not true, though, in fairness, Biden, Biden also said this. Uh, Trump said China and others stopped buying from Iran under him. China never stopped. He revived his pet lie. I don't know how many times I've done it, that he signed the Veterans Choice Program into law. Barack Obama did that in 2014. Trump signed an expanded version in 2018. And finally, Trump said Biden got rid of that veterans program. Biden has not done that. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on behalf of all the women who don't have the opportunity to stand here today. Since the Dobbs decision, Republicans have imposed draconian bans to endanger women for the sake of power. Their obsession is power. Power over their wives, sisters, daughters, every woman in our country. Donald Trump, my governor Greg Abbott, and their cronies seem to take joy in the harm they cause women despite their oath to protect them. Already calls to the National Domestic Violence Hotline about rape or sabotage birth control have nearly doubled, doubled. The laws enacted by extreme MAGA lawmakers have increased domestic abuse and carry their stain on their hands. But when Greg Abbott took at, looks at these facts, it's like the porch light is on, but nobody is home. Back home in Texas, we say, don't mess with Texas. Well, I'm here to tell Greg Abbott and Donald Trump, don't mess with Texas women. This is why we'll always put women over politics expired. and health care over bans. Thank you, and I yield back. Yeah, Joe Biden's voice was raspy, but the difference in his optimism and his record compared to Donald Trump's torrent of lies and aggression was stark. This is a country right now where the stock market just hit an all-time high, where crime is going down, where we are producing record amounts of energy, both oil and gas and renewable energy, and where, frankly, we have the longest, lowest rate of unemployment since the Second World War. Some of the things Donald Trump chose to lie about last night were really hard for Joe Biden to handle. He lied about how much Joe Biden has supported and loves veterans. He lied about his own record of saying despicable things about veterans, something his own chief of staff, a decorated Marine, confirmed. To me, one of the most memorable but depressing lines of the night was the former president saying, I didn't have sex with a porn star. And the conversation between the two of them about our future in NATO and the Indo-Pacific the inflationary and delusional ideas that Donald Trump put out as his policies and the strong and defensible record that Joe Biden has of making a lasting difference in investing in infrastructure, rebuilding manufacturing and putting our stock market on a very strong footing. I think mm -hmm. overall, the American people got to see the contrast in their records and their views of the future that they deserve. And to be clear, tonight we saw two things. People can choose between a con in chief or a commander in chief. And so what we saw was someone who sat up there and was acting as if he was some used car salesman that wanted to just tell us whatever and pretend as if it was fact. The reality is that our president submitted to you what looks like substance. The substance of the issue was simple. We have somebody that is bragging about the fact that he took Roe v. Wade away from us, whereas we know the next step. They've gone after Mifepristone. They want to go after contraception. And unfortunately, in the state of Texas, they're talking about instituting the death penalty. What the American people have to decide is that they're going to choose themselves. This election isn't about all of the lies that Trump is selling you. What it's about is the facts. The facts are that he took that right away from us, and he wants to take more rights away from us, and he did not shy away from it. Every time he didn't want to answer a question, he just decided to deflect. The reality is that people are dying. We had over 26,000 women that were impregnated in the state of Texas alone in the last year since the Dobbs decision as a result of rape. That is unacceptable. You all know the story of Kate Cox. You know the story of Dr. Denard. You know the story of women that are potentially losing their lives. And so there is only one clear choice, and that clear choice is Joe Biden and the blue team. And that's exactly why we're here. All right, Senator, we're I'll tell you, you know what I'll, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer.
answer that, and I've, I've always said to you that Republicans and Democrats are cut from a different cloth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Democrats are exquisite, they're precious, they're idealists. Look, I've known Joe Biden, and I love Joe Biden, and I've known Joe Biden for over 20 years. I've never seen Joe Biden like I saw him last night. Sure. It is worrisome. But to me, the binary, until Joe Biden tells me he's giving up, I'm not giving up on Joe Biden. And so, to me, the binary choice remains the same. He looked elderly yesterday. He sounded elderly. He is elderly. But the choice is no different. It is a very old man versus a very bad man. Old it is a so, very is a man who speaks yeah. with a weak voice, but yes. tells me the truth in a weak elderly voice, and a man who lies with impunity. He is on the black people. Puck two and spit on that thing. I didn't have sex with a porn star. Puck two and spit on that thing. There's nothing to debate. He made up the Charlottesville story. Puck two and spit on that thing. I put three great Supreme Court justices on the court, and they happened to vote in favor of killing Roe v. Wade. Puck two and spit on that thing. This is something that everybody wanted. Puck two and spit on that thing. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. Puck two and spit on that thing. This man is a criminal. This man, you're lucky. You're lucky. Puck two and spit on that thing. Well, I took two tests, cognitive tests. You denounced the people. Puck two and spit on that thing. Right. Uh, the narrative that is coming out now, and they're repeating it, uh, basically, if you look in your fridge, if Trump had been in charge, uh, you'd have so much more food in your fridge. Um, if you've uh, got a bill to pay, if Trump had been in charge, you wouldn't have got the bill. You, you think I'm making it up? This preferred, look, he's did a press conference. No. Speaker Johnson is squeaking. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen in that proceeding, but it, what was important for us to do is state the position of the, of the House. Uh, and that this is, is the guy who, within his own party, uh, I think Marjorie Taylor Greene would like him out. So, yeah, we're not going to uh, be lectured by him. Now, of course, this is all the fallout which is going to happen within hours after uh, the, the, the debate. It's all expected. It's all suddenly Speaker Johnson, you know, the guy who's always, so use my rope, always busy on the phone when someone puts a microphone in front of him. Suddenly, he's found a testicle and he's squeaking. Yeah, whatever. <laughs>